Hey, a pleasant good day, HL fans. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borg. This is going to be a preview to the Charlotte Checkers versus the Bridgeport Islanders. As of course, the Bridgeport Islanders moved on after taking down the Providence Bruins in an upset fashion in the first round in two games to none in the best of three, as they now move into the best of five level against the first place in the Atlantic Division in the regular season, Charlotte Checkers. Now, the Islanders, by how well they played and how well Corey Schneider played, 75 saves on 77 shots, was absolutely bonkers in the first round. I'm definitely not going to rule them out because I picked them because of their veteran status and mixed with the way that they have the Atu now Rotties of the world as well. Uh, you have Kyle McLean as the rookie who stepped up. Uh, Eric Brown didn't step up in the first round, but he's a guy that is a th that was seen in other ways of winning puck battles and etc. Maybe he can step up in a bigger fashion in the second round. So they have that mixed with Otto Koivula was very good in the first round. Uh, Durandu was very good in the first round, and then Zarnik uh, was really solid in the first round as well, and of course others as well, that's just to name a few, and obviously they are coming from playing more recently, as the bye is really nice for rest after the grueling season of hockey, but it's not always the best for being at the best pace once you get back, because when it comes to Bridgeport, they've recently played hockey as of last week. All the Charlotte Checkers have been doing is skating. So we'll see who's in the biggest groove to start out. I wouldn't be surprised if it's off to at least a balanced start to start off, just because Bridgeport's played hockey way more recently than the Checkers, who have been waiting for them on their bye. But the big thing for the Checkers is they have very proven age of goaltending with, of course, Decord. Anton Babayu also has been good in a limited action this year. Uh, he was in 10 games, and then Christopher Gibson has been good in limited action in 14 games. And, of course, obviously Spencer Knight's up with Florida, so you're not going to see him. So I would think it would be Decord, and then, if not, that's a coin flip between Babayu or Gibson, who you put in net there, because both of those guys are good net minders. Gibson has the more experience, um, but Anton Babayu is also a very good, solid AHL net minder that... At that point, those two kind of just come to the coin flip of what what guy do you want in at that point between uh, Babayu, who's played 202 games in the league, and Gibson, who I would have to imagine has played. Maybe maybe Babayu does have a beat with games played, but I would have to imagine just because Gibson was kind of the higher rank prospect at one time in the Islanders system and then never really, well, once by the Kings and then went to the Islanders and then ne they never made it in each. Yeah, Gibson does have a little bit more experience than Babayu, but they're both kind of at the same uh, rate. So uh, I would say those two are kind of a full coin flip, but in terms of their best netminder, he doesn't have as much experience as Babayu and Gibson. That would be Joey Decord. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what, what they're able to go with there, but I would have to envision if Joey Decord is, of course, able to go, then he would definitely be in cage. Um, when it comes to their skaters, they also have a great mix of some veterans like Scott Wilson, Zach Dalpy, um, and then the great youngsters like Logan Husko, who's not only just good as a playmaker, but good on both ends of the ice. Cole Schwint has been a brilliant uh, playmaking rookie and goal-scoring rookie. Just missed 20 goals by one and is a great two-way player as well. Um, obviously, they also have... A guy like Matt Kerstead on defense who's not afraid to take on anybody and is also a good stay-at-home guy, not guy off the puck guy, and also Bowlby, who's very good on both sides as a rookie. McCormick is a guy that's uh, willing to knock anybody off the puck. Chase Prisky continues to develop well on defense. Connor Carrick is a very solid uh, AHL defenseman that eventually probably will get another NHL uh, chance again. Uh, Dennis Senko adds skill as a younger forward. Uh, Terinsky adds more jam. Luke Henman adds... Uh, more of that just r great go-through-you play of just not knowing he's not one of the most ridiculously skilled guys on the ice, but he's a guy that plays that just run-through-you Tyler Pitlick, I guess-esque style you, to, to use one player um, as an example, or like the upshaw s styles of the players that stick around because their the, the, the work ethic is just paramount and afar and, ab and above um, some other things, you, you uh, guys, I guess you could say, because some guys just don't need to have that brick wall mentality per se because their skill's so good, where Henman is definitely fun to watch for that, but also still developing as a rookie and can continue to add more skills. So that's the second side of that. But their team is stacked. I mean, the Charlotte Checkers, they're, they're, they're absolutely stacked. Now the affiliate of the Panthers split with the... Um, of course, Seattle Kraken, which true, Alexander True, the points leader, is actually a member of the Kraken uh, system. So um, it'll be interesting to see 
what they're able to do without him next year. But they still have Schwint. They still have Wilson. Um, so I, I don't think that'll be any trouble. I would say they will go with Dackard. I have to go with the uh, Charlotte Checkers in this one. But I would say it's going to be – they're not sweeping them. With how good the Bridgeport Islanders are and how good Corey Schneider has stepped up in the postseason after being – blah in the regular season um has, other than against the phantoms uh has been very big for them and they also of course even if say Corey schneider started having struggling uh moments in the postseason well they also still have jakob skarik who's a pretty solid young goaltender so i mean th- they could always go to him but obviously you would kind of want to stick with the veteran schneider there and i don't see why he would start struggling it's more Bridgeport against a team like the Checkers that are really going to bring the offensive pace, one of those really quicker pace teams. Not that Providence isn't a quick pace team, but they're more of one of those more jam style teams, just like their big club is, where obviously the Charlotte Checkers are more like the Florida Panthers big club, but with a little bit more punch maybe than their big club affiliate. But they're going to be that push the offense really big, but also be one of the have somebody stay back when Florida's at their best with that's when the checkers at their best too they have the one or two guys at least stay back as the other guys really up the ante and uh push it down their throats on offense and I don't know if that's going to play well to Bridgeport style of play of keeping guys at the outside knocking guys off the puck they might just be too quick to be able to get the opportunities to pound them off the puck but we'll have to see I think Bridgeport has I'll give them a 20 percent chance in the series so I'm giving them a pretty decent chance compared to probably what other people would give but I would still have to pick the checkers in this one this has been a preview to the Charlotte checkers and Bridgeport Islanders going to be a good series the best of five in this one after they took on the best of three and the Islanders won taking down the Providence Bruins peace out everybody and stay safe